Russia is increasing units in northeastern Sumy region as it's preparing for major offensive on Ukraine in coming weeks. According to estimates of analysts, Russia's ongoing offensive on Kharkiv appears to be aimed at drawing Ukraine's limited reserves into the fight ahead of the main summer push in the coming weeks. Russia opened second front in northeastern Kharkiv region last week. Ukrainian armed forces have already been stationed along more than 1,000 kilometers of front line. The Ukrainian command informed NATO of the Syria situation on the battlefield caused by delays in the supply of weapons. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky who visited the city of Kharkiv on Thursday, said the situation in the northeast was under control. We are working in detail with our partners to provide, in particular, Kharkiv, Donetsk, Sumy and other regions with more basic defense, namely air defense systems and sufficient long-range weapons, Zelensky said. He said that after returning to Kiev, he spoke with Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk about Ukraine's needs, about Patriot systems that could significantly change the situation in the Kharkiv direction. The attack launched on Kharkiv late last week, was the most significant border incursion since the full-scale invasion began. In just two days, Moscow has captured from 100 to 125 square kilometers that include at least seven villages, most of them already depopulated, according to two open-source monitoring analysts. Powerful explosions hit the main base of Russian military aviation in Crimea in evening hours of May 15 and set fires burning for hours, in long-range strikes the Kremlin said were American Atoms missiles fired by armed forces of Ukraine gunners. Local social media followed by regional officials reported more than 20 explosions of varying intensity audible in the vicinity of Belbek airfield. Russian officials in the occupation authority in the Kremlin-occupied Crimea in early statements said Ukrainian forces had launched long-range missiles at Belbek airfield but all the Ukrainian weapons were shot down. Later official announcements, among them by the Moscow-appointed mayor of Sevastopol Mikhail Razvoziv, said US-manufactured Atoms missiles had been used in the alleged failed strikes. The Russian officials claimed all the Atoms were intercepted by Russian air defenses, but some of the US-made precision-guided weapons had dispersed cluster munitions, prompting the authorities to warn the public not to touch them. Independent analysts and local social media contradicted the Kremlin narrative that a major Ukrainian missile strike against Belbek caused no damage. Comments in Sevastopol and Crimean military chat groups confirmed the launch of air defense missiles but, also, multiple explosions on the ground within the confines of the airfield. Independent analysts said recordings of major fires burning at the airfield for at least two hours following the strikes, and secondary explosions unconfirmed but reported widely by local residents as the fires burned, could possibly be evidence that the target of the Ukrainian missile strikes were not aircraft, but Belbek airfield's ammunition bunkers and fuel depots. A missile strike on a Russian airfield in occupied Crimea could have damaged MiG-31 fighters. In total, 24 airplanes and 6 helicopters can be counted at this base. According to Astra Channel 2 MiG-31 aircrafts, an air defense missile system, S-400 and a warehouse of fuels and lubricants were destroyed at the Belbek military airfield that night. Two Russian servicemen were killed, 13 were injured. The Ukrainian armed forces figured out how to destroy Russian turtle tanks. At the beginning of April, a new type of Russian armored vehicle appeared at the front in Ukraine, turtle tanks, T-62, T-72 or T-80 tanks with an additional metal protective shell made of roofing material, lattice and mesh. According to Forbes, despite the strange appearance, these tanks were quite effective, but now the Ukrainian military seems to have learned to cope with them. As the publication notes, the problem for the Russians was the turtle tanks were a technological solution to a specific technological problem, protection from thousands of Ukrainian FPV drones. The turtle tanks welded shell blocks, FPV, from most directions and radio interference can interfere with drone control signals. Thus, protected from Ukraine's most important weapon at the time, turtle tanks could move toward Ukrainian positions with relative impunity, 
clearing mines with their front rollers so that other vehicles could get close enough to land infantry. And until then, the Ukrainians only used FPV to protect their positions. Turtle tanks were a serious help for Russian operations and a serious threat to Ukrainian ones. Forbes writes. However, FPVs have always been a temporary measure, a way for Ukrainian troops to compensate for artillery and missile shortages caused by the months-long blockade of American aid. And when that blockade was finally lifted late last month, US munitions began to change the dynamics on the front lines. Ukrainian brigades can now fire 100-pound shells and 50-pound rockets in addition to launching 2-pound drones. This explains why so many turtle tanks are being destroyed. A thin metal roof can repel a flimsy drone with a pound of explosives, but it is less than useless against artillery shells whose payload can exceed 25 pounds if it penetrates the shell of a turtle tank, it can cause a fire that turns the vehicle into an oven, Forbes notes. In addition, the welded metal shell prevents the tank crew from seeing and can prevent escape if the vehicle is immobilized. Poor visibility and mobility of turtle tanks was not a serious problem until the tanks were seriously damaged. Now that they are being bombarded with heavier ammunition, turtle tank crews cannot afford to remain blind and fall into a trap. The publication notes, Forbes believes that in the coming weeks and months, the Ukrainian armed forces will find it easier and easier to knock out turtle tanks. And this may force Russian troops to abandon this design of the vehicle or at least modify it. However, reducing the metal shell to provide greater mobility and visibility may allow more FPV to pass through.